Daily Minutes of Saturday, August 8, 2015. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. As every week in the first of our two English shows, we have the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. For data today, I would like to test 8PSK250 again. It tends to be more susceptible to QRM than the other version, 8PSK125, but on the other hand, it is really, really fast. 8 PSK 250, 8 PSK 250, it is as usual around 1000 hertz, 1000 hertz. CQ, 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 calling all radio amateurs and shortwave listeners. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NGH in Nottingham. You can find the script on the RSGB's own web pages. Good morning, it's Sunday the 9th of August 2015. This is GB2RS News. Now for the propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO. Further complaints about poor HF conditions were heard this week as the summer doldrums continued, not helped by a less than brilliant solar flux index of about 105. Having said that, the sun is showing more activity with a sprinkling of spots. Geomagnetic conditions were on the whole settled this week, at least until Thursday when the KP index hit 4, thanks to a high-speed solar wind stream. A visible aurora warning was issued when the plasma hit the earth after being thrown out from a recurring coronal hole on the sun. A coronal hole is an area where the solar magnetic field reaches out into space, so the hot gas can escape. A look at the Chiltern Ionosan data for noon on Thursday showed that the F2 layer could support communications up to about 23 megs around noon, but this isn't typical. The previous day it was around 18 megs. We could therefore recommend trying to use 18 or 21 megs during the day to minimise D layer absorption and maximise your DX potential. After dark, move down to 14 megs or 18 megs, which have both brought a few surprises in terms of DX recently, unfortunately were some way away from better autumnal HF conditions. VHF and up this week, meteor scatter operators can look forward to the Perseids, the longest meteor shower of the week. It peaks around the 12th. There'll be plenty of activity on meteor scatter either side of the peak. This is the time to try meteor scatter if you've never done it before, using FSK441 on 2 and 4 metres and JT6M on 6 metres with 50 watts and a small Yagi should give you contacts. At the peak, even SSB contacts are possible. An area of high pressure just north of the Azores with ridge extending along the English Channel this week will mean some slightly enhanced tropo conditions are possible at times. In particular, there'll be some good prospects for ducting along the west coast of France and Spain and down towards the Canaries and Azores. By Wednesday, there are prospects for, for tropo paths across the North Sea. August means we're drawing towards the close of the sporadic east season, but note there is still potential for the occasional opening through to the end of the month and into September. These may be harder to find and relatively fleeting, but it's worth monitoring the beacons nevertheless. That's it from the propagation team this week. That's it from me. Until next week, also. Daily Minutes is daily at 1700 UTC on 6.005 and 73.10 kHz and 5 minutes later on the PI2 NOS repeater system. Next day there are reruns, 800 UTC on 73.10 kHz, 830 UTC on PI2 NOS and 12.30 UTC on 95.60 kHz. Our weekend shows are in English, all other shows are in Dutch. Mail address is delta x-ray at x-ray delta victor dot mic echo. This bulletin can also be received several times a day on the non-commercial talk radio station Shorties FM on the internet. Times are 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 10.30 each morning and 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock p.m. Shorties FM is on fm.shorties.nl which also has a special low bandwidth stream for smartphone.